Welcome to uh, On The Level Broadcasting from the Blue Ocean Network Studios here in Beijing. My name is Fergus Thompson and I'm Irish. Now that may be true, but it's uh, not necessarily going to have people rolling in the aisles. So why is it that this does? Hi everybody. Hi. So, uh, I'm Irish. Well, the man with the uh, ethnic identity crisis is my guest today on On The Level. That's uh, Zhou Wang, or Huangxi, depending on which country he happens to be telling jokes in at the time. Uh, Zhou shot to stardom in the United States after appearing several times on the David Letterman and Ellen DeGeneres shows. He even managed to get uh, a laugh out of the notoriously difficult audience at the radio and television correspondence annual dinner, including the uh, guest of honor on that occasion, Vice President Joe Biden. I'm honored to uh, meet uh, Vice President Joe Biden here tonight. Um, I actually read your autobiography, and today I see you. I think the book is much better. <laughs> Well, after that, Joe uh, and his family left the United States, came to China, where he now stars in his own TV show and is uh, trying to st start a stand-up revolution, a stand-up comedy revolution. Uh, Joe Wong, uh, thanks for coming on The Level. Thanks so much for having me here. Right. Joe, um, that line that, that you start off with there, uh, hi, I'm Joe Wong, I'm Irish. Um, yeah. Have you tried that here in China? Uh, not yet. You know what? I probably should. <laughs> would, it, would it work with a Chinese audience, though? Probably won't. A lot of people are still confused about that line, and they're asking me during my live performance here online, you know, why is that line funny? Why do you say you're, you're Irish? <laughs> not only are you not Irish, but you're not originally a, a comedian. You, you actually achieved what would be, for many Chinese people, the American dream. You went to the States, you got a doctorate degree uh, in, in science, you were a research scientist, a good job, and you gave it all up for stand-up. Why did you do that? Yeah, I think you're, you're right. I, I am one dog away from accomplishing my Chinese dream. Yeah, my American dream, sorry. You know, the house, the car, the wife, kid. I'm just only missing a dog. <laughs> <laughs> but, but later on, I just I wanted to uh, know more about American society. I'm more curious about people than uh, what I used to study in the lab, which is uh, fruit flies. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so did you take a sort of a scientific approach to, to comedy? Uh, a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess one example is uh, in science, you have to do a lot of experiments mm -hmm. to most of the time you have to fail in order to get the right one. Uh, for comedy, it's kind of similar. You, know, you have to write a tons of material, and finally you find this one or two jokes that works, and then you go from there. So how did you actually begin that process? I mean, do you absorb comedy? Do, 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 do you study it? Um, my first stand-up comedy experience was back in 2001. At the time, I, I stayed in the United States for almost eight years. And I went to the stand-up comedy club with my coworkers, but, but I still could only understand maybe 50% of the joke. Mm -hmm. And that 50% is mostly setups. <laughs> <laughs> they, they deliver punchlines of why are people laughing here? Uh, and that's probably why uh, most Chinese went to America. What I think they're worried about the most is uh, people cracking jokes. Mm -hmm. It's really <laughs> awkward. Everybody else is laughing and you have no idea what they're talking about. Right. Then I went to the comedy club that night. Who, the performer that night was Emo Phillips. Even though I could understand very little, but mm -hmm. the part that I do understand made me really laugh hard. So I was like, wow, this is great. And then later on, I just started to uh, try it myself. Did your family back in China think it was a joke when you said, I'm, I'm leaving research science and a good job and I'm going to take up uh, comedy? Well, I didn't tell them. <laughs> <laughs> the safest option possible. Exactly. Like most uh, Chinese abroad, they only tell good news to their parents. <laughs> they would never tell, oh, you know, I'm switching my jobs or this and that. You know, well, I try to keep those things away from my parents. Right. But they know now. Oh, they know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like my dad knew about it from a Chinese radio. He was cooking at home and listening to a radio, and the radio said, oh, there was a, uh, a PhD in biochemistry from China. And my dad was, oh, this sounds like my son. <laughs> and then they announced the name, and my dad was really scared. What, my son is doing this? <laughs> right. yeah. Well, you said it was difficult for you to understand those jokes, right, uh, at the beginning, and, and then you came to, to telling those jokes. Mm -hmm. um, 
you're back here and now in China doing the same thing. But can you give us some sort of an idea of, of, of what sort of thing will work with an American audience and oh. won't work with a Chinese audience? Um, I think the techni techniques people use to write jokes are similar, you know, like um, puns or uh, like wordplay, uh, funny uh, stories. But what's different is uh, puns are harder to get people to laugh in America than in China. My son grew up in, in America. When he was only two, three years old, he would tell me stories, tell me puns and uh, word plays he learned from kindergarten. In, back in the 40s and 50s, that was popular in America. Mm -hmm. but, but after the 60s and 70s, uh, there was a com comedic revolution, I guess. People kind of uh, moved away from those street jokes. Uh, a priest, uh, a pastor, and a rabbi went to a bar, that kind of joke. Mm -hmm. You tell it, it's funny, I tell it's funny. But since the 70s and or 60s probably, people think everybody should have their own style of uh, comedy. You know, you tell a couple of jokes, people immediately know, oh, that's him, that's her. Instead of, oh, that's a funny joke, I will tell it too. So you think that revolution, as you referred to it, hasn't happened in China in terms of comedy? Not quite. Um, Are you here to start it? <laughs> uh, I, I hope so. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, kids in China born after the 90s, they have a lot of uh, individuality. That's something I didn't have when I was in China. You know, everybody kind of tried to be the same. But now younger kids, they try to be more individuals. That's a really good sign for stand-up comedy. Well, a, a lot of comedy is, is, is often based on people having shared experiences yeah. and being able to identify with something people say. Mm -hmm. Now, you are a Chinese person who spent a lot of time in the States, and now you're back here. Is that a problem for you that you don't know what people are identifying with because you've been out of each country so long? Yes, um, and I got a lot of flack about it. You know, when I first moved back last year, a lot of people... From the audience? Uh, and from the audience, from the internet. Right. <laughs> Yeah, this guy would never work in China because <laughs> his jokes are too American. Uh -huh. um, but the thing is, um, uh, my jokes in America is about me feeling out of place in America as an immigrant. And, uh, coming into China, I, I'm still an outsider for some reason. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've been away for almost 20 years, and these 20 years are the uh, a period when China experiences the most changes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, don't, I don't even understand some of the English they use in China now, like the word out, you know, like in America there's a magazine called Out. It's about gay and lesbians uh, coming out of the closet. Right. And I came here and people say, oh, you, you're out and stuff. That just means you, you're, you're not in, you're not in with the crowd. Right. So how is the, you, you are starting to work in stand-up here and you're doing gigs. Mm -hmm. How is it going? Are, are these audiences young people? Are they, yeah. are they people who, who have a different sort of mentality and a different spirit? Very, very different. Um, mostly uh, college kids, uh, white collar workers. Uh, even the performers here, almost every performer I saw in China has a degree in engineering or uh, uh, journalism. There are, there are a lot of PhDs doing this, you know, doctors, you know. So a lot of parents crying back in the farm. <laughs> <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> what are you doing to me? But, yeah. Yeah. but, but uh, the thing is, uh, uh, people really love this, this form, at least uh, among the younger people. So it is growing? It's growing very rapidly. Mm -hmm. I think uh, for two reasons. One is what I mentioned before, you know, people are more individualistic. Another is um, the popularity of uh, American dramas and British dramas in China. People are watching these online all the time. Oh, yeah, like the Big Bang Theory was huge here, you know. And, and a lot of the humor in those, uh, in those shows are kind of similar to, uh, to the stand-up humor. So people accept it really fast. Right. Actually, you know. During that, that performance at the uh, Radio and Television Correspondents Club, you, uh, you dissed the Vice President of the United States. Uh, that's <laughs> not why you returned to China, I presume. Uh, oh, no, no, I, I don't plan to do. I, well, I can still diss Joe Biden in China. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. um, 
You wouldn't, you're working now here on, on television here, but that is not, a, it, that's still beyond the pale in, in, on Chinese television, certainly. You're not going to see somebody complaining about or, or joking about a, a president or a, or a premier. Oh, no. Do you think we will at some stage? You can never say never in China, because China changes so fast. Um, I'm, I was, Actually, I'm still pretty surprised by how open China now compared to 20 years ago. Is it, is it TV here saying we can't talk about politics or is it just a Chinese cultural thing that we don't uh, talk badly about leaders in general? It's both. Um, China never has the culture of uh, making fun of their leaders. You know, it's been 5,000 years. Mm. You, you don't see anybody make fun of their leaders. Right. If not, not, not publicly, but not I, public. I've, I've heard some fairly racy jokes about leaders talked over the dinner table. Oh, yeah, time. but that's the thing. It's not that China, the Chinese don't have a sense of humor about their leaders. Yeah, it's let just make, that, let's make that clear. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's just that it's not allowed, or the, the tradition just doesn't permit that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I kind of understand, uh, accept that. You mm -hmm. know, you want, you know, my main goal is to do stand-up comedy or uh, comedy on television. And I believe that every comedian, deep down, they believe that they can make everything funny. You know, you see a brick on the road, you can, you, I think, somehow I can make that funny. Probably not today. <laughs> One of these days, I'm going to make a big joke out of it. All right. So, a lot of the news, you don't even have to uh, work on it. It's just, just funny, you know, because uh, there's so many uh, clash of culture here, mm -hmm. the new and the old. Are there other cu aspects of Chinese culture that uh, affect humor? The way that people react to jokes and the sort of jokes that they find funny? One thing I found out is, um, like in China, you can make fun of women. Because in America, you can never... At your, at your peril. Uh, yeah, at my peril. But like in America, I would never dare to joke about, you know, oh, you know, I don't like the way women drive. But here in China, people are okay. And I was scared about it. I was, because um, I actually asked a couple of women, I was like, you don't feel offended? They were like, no, that's, that's the way we drive. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> that's interesting. So there are ways that you feel that there are more avenues in comedy here, ones that are closed to you in the United States, whereas mm -hmm. politically you might be more closed in. There are things that you can... Political correctness doesn't exist to the same extent. Yeah, the, the political, political correctness here is probably, you, know, you can't joke about the leaders or the current policies. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, but you can joke about other people or other things. Mm -hmm. Those are fine. Well, what about the, this Chinese concept of loss of face? Because to be a comedian or to be the butt of a comedian's joke, you're going to lose face, aren't you? But that yeah. is something that's considered something you don't, you don't put somebody in that position in China. So how, how do you get around that? Well, with comedians, it's OK. And, and like when, even when I was in the United States, um, I got interviewed on Chinese television. I can make fun of the host as long as he's a comedian with a sense of humor. But if he's not, he or she is not a comedian, it's very difficult. That's why it's a little bit tougher to do uh, like a Letterman style talk shows because you know Letterman he will joke with you know actors and actresses or you know sure, celebrities are fair it, game. Yeah. But here, the celebrities are more serious about their status. They don't want to lose face in front, in front of some comedian. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> so mm -hmm. you just have to, you know, you have to always you know, put them on a pedestal, you know, pedestal, I guess. Right. So. Now, the show that you're doing at the moment, you're doing a TV show here. Yeah. Uh, it's called, in English, it's called uh, Is It True? Is It True, um, yes. What's that about? Give us an idea of the program and, and how you're finding it. Yeah. Uh, I did a TV interview here in China and and uh, people from the TV shows who came to my hotel that night. Uh, they were like, oh, we're, we're doing this show, and uh, we're hoping that we can combine comedy with some kind of a Mythbuster type of show. And the reason why I like that topic is because, you know, I've been in the United States for 19 years. I came back and there's this uh, uh, deluge of information toward me. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what is real, what is not, you know, like, uh, for example, the freshly squeezed fruit juice. I, I loved it when I first came here. But then later on, I found out that like 80, 90% of them uh, are, are 
mixed with some chemicals you can buy cheaply from a tiny market. It's an interesting topic. I want to know, the TV audience wanted to know, and also I can do some stand-up comedy on the show. You know, I, have, I opened the show with some jokes, mm -hmm. and uh, I will tell a couple of jokes before uh, leading to another topic. So. It's a very different style to what you were doing in the United States, certainly, and it's got, the, the, there are, I guess, there's sort of customs in the way comedy works here, because it's got that typical Chinese thing of sort of, bing, when a joke is told, just in case you missed it, or uh, yeah, a flash yeah. on the screen, does, does that grate with you at all? Oh, oh man, the first time it was scary, because I was on a, on a show, and I was talking there, all of a sudden the keyboard started to play, and I thought, I, I thought there's something wrong with, with, the, with the studio. I stopped there. I was like, what's going on here? Uh, but, but here, a lot of times, that especially trained TV hosts, they're really afraid of, uh, in Chinese, called liu bai, or silence. But with comedy, you have to give people a little bit of time to react to it. But they, they can't stand it, you know. A lot of uh, TV hosts in China saw, saw my performance in America. One of their comments is, is uh, oh my, I can't, I can't watch this performance. Why? Because he, after he tells a joke, sometimes he waits a little bit. They, they can't stand the time. They're like, oh no, why don't you say something? Why there's no noise there? You, you do have that, a very distinctive style. Um, we can have a look at a bit of it. I'm an immigrant. And uh, I used to drive this used car with a lot of bumper stickers that are impossible to peel off. And one of them said, if you don't speak English, go home. <laughs> and uh, I didn't notice it for two years. Does, does that work with Chinese audiences? Because they, they won't be used to this. Yeah, it, it took some getting used to, but... I've done a lot of shows in, in uh, clubs and theaters. I think people can get it. Uh, but you just have to have the courage to tell it with confidence and let it sink. And, in, and the audience will respond, will respond to it. We think of some of the comics in the States uh, making quite a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Do comics in China make money or do people presenting TV programs make much money? Um, I mean, the TV hosts are not paid as much as those in the United States, but they're still pretty, they're doing pretty well. Mm -hmm. it, it does seem in China, if you watch the, the, the variety shows, the same four or five faces come up again and again. I'm thinking of money, uh, Jiao Ben San is, is somebody from the northeast of China, as you are from, who yeah. is very successful in a traditional way here. Yeah. Has a private plane, I believe. Yeah, yeah, I don't have a private plane yet. Not but yet. that's my goal. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, but, you know, as long as uh, you know, I, I can make this form a popular thing, like more accepted, that probably at least let people know there is a, a comedy form called stand-up. Uh, I'm pretty happy about it. As, as long as people know it and go to the theater to watch it, there's going to be more and more uh, stand-up comedians in China who are doing really well. And we need people to do well economically to inspire people. You know, otherwise, you know, people saw, oh, you're a stand-up comedian. <laughs> you know, you can't really make ends meet. You know, it's kind of hard to to attract people into the business. Exactly. You mentioned the the uh, the Big Bang Theory and its huge popularity here in China. Sitcom. Mm -hmm. Is that something that would appeal to you? Oh, definitely. I, I love sitcom, um, but not a lot of Chinese uh, investors want to invest in sitcoms. Yeah, I, I'm trying to. I'm trying to get people interested in it, but um, it's still a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. um, it's very hard to come up with a, an original idea, an original sitcom. It's hard enough in the United States, but it's even harder here because the the writers are not used to that format. But I'm I'm trying to push that. How about working in sitcom in the United States? Is that something that you've thought about? Oh, yeah, I, I'm still working on it. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 I've been working on it for three or four years now, uh, working with uh, different writers. But, uh, but in China, since TV is still fairly young, uh, there are more opportunities here. And there are some TV stations who are interested in, in, in sitcoms.
Now it says you said it took many years for you to get to the stage where you were doing comedy on, on clubs uh, and television. Yet we do sometimes see in China uh, a foreigner arriving here, certainly a few years ago, and you know, virtually off the plane and onto the television screen. Um, did that make you sort of feel it's not fair? It's not fair. Yes, I, it does. Uh, <clears throat> I remember a couple of years ago. Uh, when I was interviewed by David Moser, he was an American. He came here and somebody wrote a couple of lines for him to say on TV. He got up there, he said it, and the audience was laughing. And he was nervous. It was his, he thought he said something wrong. He didn't even know he was telling a joke. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I was like, wow, that's sweet. You know? It took me like seven and a half years to get on American TV. So. Mm -hmm. um, what about, do you think, is there a market for Chinese comedy outside of China? Because certain, you, you, you think of uh, Jewish humor, sometimes mm -hmm. uh, Italian humor. Is the world ready for a sort of a Chinese humor revolution outside of China? Um, I guess, but not a lot of people are working on it. You know, <laughs> like in America, you can buy a really thick book about Jewish humor, mm -hmm. really thick book about Irish jokes. If there's an opening for you, Joe, some oh, yeah. money to be made out of <laughs> yeah, Exactly. But the, the Chinese stereotype is interesting, because, uh, you know, like Chinese stereotype is, um, you know, we're hardworking, we're good at math. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people say this, you can't even really get mad at them. You're not happy, but you, can't, you don't know what to say. Screw you, I, I'm lazy and I'm dumb. You can't really say that. You know? So, so do, do you find people were, were found the fact that a Chinese person was doing humor in the States was itself something unusual, something that made Yes, them yes. Uh, I, I remember one cab driver once said to me, oh, I saw you on Letterman. Oh, I never thought a Chinese guy can tell a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he's not alone. When I was in college, I wrote some article on the news, campus newspaper. Mm -hmm. And my English teacher at the time also very seriously said to me, oh, oh, who, who would have oh, who would have thought a Chinese has a sense of humor? <laughs> she was genuinely surprised. Right. She's a very nice person, but <laughs> she's surprised. But, but for some reason... Did you tell her you were the only one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm the... Uh, yeah, I'm the godfather of Chinese humor. <laughs> no, no. Uh, but for yeah. some reason, once the Chinese uh, goes overseas, they, they, all of a sudden they just clam up. They don't want to, you know, express themselves. Be because I think people should be aware. If you were at a dinner table with a group of Chinese friends or family here, uh -huh. a lot of the time is spent laughing. People do make jokes a lot, but they're, they're that doesn't seem to transfer into doing it in the public sphere. So yeah, exactly. They're loud and sometimes very crude and stuff. But then once on stage, it's especially stays overseas, but it, like in China, there are a lot of uh, like Xiangsun clubs and or Aranzuan, the two, two people singing together, they tell a lot of really r crude jokes. <laughs> not, not something that you do, you, you tend to sort of, I mean, your, your humor is generally would be sort of acceptable to all audiences. Yeah, right? yes, I, I try to be that way because when I do shows in, in comedy clubs in America, a lot of times people tell these off-color jokes. Like, if you sit there for two hours, you know, 70, 80 percent of the jokes are dirty jokes. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm I'm not opposed to them, but I just think you know I want to distinguish a little bit. Uh, so I tend tend to gear toward cleaner jokes, especially later on after I got on the television. People come to see me. And for whatever reason, people tend to bring their whole family to see me. Mm -hmm. And it's very hard for me to do off-color jokes. You know, so. and I guess you, you can <laughs> practice your routines on your son this way. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah. And the interesting thing is uh, my son was born in America. So uh, when he comes to China, there are a lot of things that are new to him as well. Like uh, when we're walking on the street near Yunghe Gong, which is uh, a, a Buddhist temple here, and people just come up to you and say, hey, do you want some incense? I said, no, I don't want it. It's free. Okay, give it to me. And then after I took it, the guy said, uh, how about uh, 20 yuan? I said, you said it was free. But he said, but still, you should give me some money. <laughs> okay, all right. And then we walk around a little bit more. There was uh, some guy came up to me again. Hey, do you want me to pray for you in the temple? I said, okay. I just directly gave him 10 yuan. I figured, why bother arguing, right? They just, they just want money. Right. And the guy was like, how many uh, people are there in your family? I said, three. He was like, but 10 is not divisible by three. 
<laughs> I was like, okay, just give me, give me one yuan back. <laughs> that's, that is divisible. So after seeing all these stuff, you know, my son's behavior changes a little bit too. Because mm -hmm. like in America, uh, if he do some chore, I will give him some allowance. But uh, after coming here, one day all of a sudden he said, Daddy, uh, you don't have to give me any money. I will, I, will, I will just clean the table for you. I was like, wow, my son really grew up and it's a positive influence. And after he cleaned the table, he said to me, Daddy, can you give me five yuan? I said, but you said you don't want any money. But he said, but you should still give me some money. <laughs> I was like, okay, he's learning fast. <laughs> so so the, 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 the future for you and your family, do you see it as a future in comedy in China, a, a future in comedy in the United States, or a mixture of the two things? Uh, it, it probably has to be a mixture of two things. You know, the, the television business is not uh, like, a, like a permanent job. You know, there's always changes and stuff. Um, I have some uh, ideas because, um, to be honest, after living in the United States for 19 years, when I talk to TV executives and writers, what is what I feel about uh, strange or fresh in America, I can't name anything. <laughs> I was like, well, everything is really familiar. But after staying in China for a while, uh, I, always, I started to feel, oh, certain things in America is pretty uh, interesting or unique. I, I get fresh perspective that way. So I may be doing some uh, some TV program in America just based on my own observation or my with my new identity mm -hmm. of a, a, a Chinese TV host going to America. You know that kind of uh, that kind of theme. So sort of an international comedian traveling between the two countries and and, and introducing two different types of humor. Yeah, right? yeah. and uh, and also I'm doing comedy in both languages now. And a lot of times I have to do a Chinese show first, and then go to another club and do an English set. And Beijing, strangely, you can do that in Beijing, but I have to say that uh, like in smaller cities. Uh, they have very vague concept of what stand-up comedy is. So uh, hopefully I can do more touring uh, later this year or next year. Strangely, doing touring in China is very difficult. What, what are the difficulties? Because uh, you have to get a lot of permits from every city. It's not like in the United States, you put down the rent, you buy insurance, and you have a show. Mm -hmm. You just sell tickets and do right, it. Right. But in, in China, there is, there's more red tape. It's very hard to get through them. I don't even know how to get through them, so I have to collaborate with another uh, like performance arts company or something to, right. to, to uh, do it together. So, but you work with other comedians as well in trying to promote this form of comedy, don't you? Yes, yes. Uh, I am. I'm doing a club here called uh, Joe's Club. Uh, uh, Where did you get that name? <laughs> yeah, somebody. <laughs> My English teacher told me that. <laughs> uh, basically, the idea of this club is uh, one is to uh, just tell people some basics about stand-up comedy. You know, you had the setup, punchline, uh, how to open a show, how to close a show and uh, also organize shows so people learn some basics uh, of stand-up comedy and then they have a pr place to perform. Mm -hmm. So we are doing that. And uh, the good thing is... So uh, you're, you're sort of teaching comedians uh, how, how to do this new form or, or yeah, people are just interested in it. Yeah, I didn't want to. But, but, then th uh, but a lot of people email me uh, saying, hey, you know, can you have a little class so we can learn some basics? Uh, you know what is really popular in, in among Chinese comedians. Well, it's uh, The Secrets of Comedy. It's a book from the United States. It's all in English. But there's no, no Chinese books about stand-up comedy. So I figure I'll just do a very basic stuff and, and create some environment for people to try it out. Well, I think that uh, comedy, or stand-up, as we call it, a revolution, um, should be <laughs> safe in your hands anyway. Oh, um, I hope so too. And that you and your family will have that life between the United States and here in China mm -hmm. and uh, continue to uh, make people laugh. Joe Wong, thank you very much. Oh, thanks so much. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.